Hello, Motor Rider World fans, and in this video, we're going to talk about the latest news coming out of the MotoGP and World Superbike paddocks. There's plenty of rumors going around, and one big name has jumped ship in World Superbikes to go join a new manufacturer. So stick around, and we'll highlight each one of those rumors going on and the big name that has made the jump. Before we get into it, a big shout out to Dunlop Motorcycle Tires South Africa for sponsoring this video. Let's start then with the World Superbike paddock and the big news coming out of there is that of top rack Raz Gadioglu who is leaving Yamaha at the end of the 2023 season to join factory BMW. Now I'm still kind of on the fence with this move because I was really hoping top rack would go to MotoGP but he's come out and he said he just didn't have a good enough feeling with the Yamaha MotoGP bike which he of course tested twice now most recently uh, a month ago at Jerez uh, no real kind of information came out of it other than his lap time from the last one and it wasn't too bad to be honest 1.3 seconds off the fastest time that Danny Pedrosa posted in that test and we all saw what Danny Pedrosa managed to do in the MotoGP race at Jerez so not too bad but I think the relationship between Top Rack and Yamaha somewhat soured a bit. I don't think the MotoGP offer or the contract that he wanted was there. Again, maybe just uh, didn't think the Yamaha uh, MotoGP package was competitive enough. Maybe he wasn't even given the opportunity to to look at um, pursuing a, moto, a career in MotoGP. But either way, the relationship has now or will now come to an end at the end of the 2023 season. And in a way, I'm I'm I'm, I'm excited because uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that Top Rack is jumping ship and taking on the challenge that is BMW World Superbike. We know BMW are desperate, 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 desperate to win uh, a world championship in, in World Superbike, something they haven't been able to do. They've come close once or twi twice, but they, to be honest, they've never really mounted any serious um, championship contention. And they've had big names, you know, they've had Marco Belandri, they've had Chaz Davies, they've had... You know, they've got Scott Redding now, who a couple of years ago on the Ducati finished running up, but just something not there. And I think in a rider like Top Rack Raz Gadioglu will probably be their best opportunity to go for that World Superbike title. So I'm really excited for that. A little bit bummed that uh, we're not going to see Top Rack Raz Gadioglu in, in MotoGP for now, potentially, probably forever. Top Rack came out and said that, you know, if he was going to stay in, in World Superbikes, he needed a fresh approach, he needed a new challenge. And you're certainly going to get that at BMW. Um, as I said, it just hasn't clicked with BMW. We know uh, in production-based form, the BMW S1000RR and the M1000RR, as it is now, is is world-class. They just haven't managed to 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 translate that success in, in World Superbikes. At the moment, they've they've got Scott Redding and Michael van der Mark. Michael van der Mark just unable to put any kind of consistency together with, he, with his injury problems. And Scott Redding, you know, I just think he's plagued by, by mental problems, you know, just always never happy and just never seems to be happy in, in whatever situation he's in. When he was at Factory Ducati on the, what is now the package to be on, he just was never happy there. He's coming to BMW and it all looked like it was going to be this match made in heaven. Hasn't quite worked out the way both BMW and Scott Redding wanted it to. Signs and glimpses of, of, of what can be achieved there, but nothing that serious and you know, they're both taller stature riders, if I could call it that. Scott Redding's, you know, by no means, you know, a bulky, fat rider, but certainly one of the bigger riders uh, in, in, uh, in the paddock and on the grid. And Michael van der Mark, as I said, one of the taller riders, but just it, it just seems like every time he crashes, which does seem to happen a lot, he just injures himself. So I think it's a great signing for BMW. Listen, it really, especially, um, especially after... A bid came in from Honda. Apparently, there's rumor that Honda World Superbike came in with a big bid to try and lure Top Rack Raz Gadioglu over to Honda. And there was those ties between his his manager, Kef, Kenan Sofoglu, and, and Honda. So you were kind of thinking that move could potentially happen, especially if Honda could give him some kind of, you know, contract obligation to potentially go into MotoGP. And that doesn't seem like it's worked out. BMW obviously came with, with the best offer. And I think it's exciting. If Top Rack can go there and... And compete and potentially win a championship on the BMW, you know, that is job done. That's that's something no one else has been able to do. So I think it'll be a big feather in his cap. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see Top Rack Race Gary Oglu on, on the four cylinder screamer to try and make that work, getting that BMW with that extra downforce of those giant wings on the front 
of that M1000 RR. I'm excited to see him get all kinds of out of shape and do what top ranked race Gary Oglu does so well um, on a world superbike machine. Now, the other talk is that, um, you know, who is going to make space for top ranked race Gary Oglu? Michael van der Mark is on his final year uh, of his contract at BMW. Scott Redding still got another year running there. So it does look most likely that Michael van der Mark will be parting ways and making room for top rack. Or there is actual talk of a three-man full factory BMW team um, being kitted out for the 2024 season. Now, I can see quite a bit of truth in this rumor because obviously the Rocket BMW um, Motor Rad World Superbike team, as it's known, Rocket being an energy drink company, you know, top rack race, Gary Oglu having his tie ins with Red Bull, Kenan Safoglu pretty much owning Red Bull Turkey. There could be a clash there. So, could we be seeing top rack race, Gary Oglu in kind of a separate standalone Red Bull kind of backed BMW M1000RR World Superbike team and BMW keeping faith with Michael van der Mark and Scott Redding or potentially getting rid of Michael van der Mark and going for a couple of other riders that could potentially be on the market? Uh, Michael Ruben Rinaldi, Axel Bassani, there's some riders potentially coming from Moto2, Sam Lowe's, and a couple of others, which we'll get into a little bit later. But um, yeah, that, that rumor of, of a three-man full factory BMW team, I think has got some legs to it, mainly because of that energy drink sponsorship. I don't think uh, a Kenan Sofoglu or a top rack race Gary Oglu is going to give up that Red Bull sponsorship that and the big money that comes with that to go with this kind of almost unknown for now, this rocket um, energy drink, you know, it's still very much a new entity and how long are they going to be around to give up an established big brand like Red Bull, you know, to go to Rocket, I can't see it, it, it happening, especially with those tyres of Kenan Safoglu. So, yeah, potentially a three-man um, BMW World Superbike team for next year. Exciting? Yes. Um, who's going to take Top Rack's place in the Yamaha team now? This is big news. They've, of course, re-signed Andrea Locatelli, so he will be staying in the Yamaha team for the 2024 season. Um, there is talks of Axel Bassani potentially taking Top Rack's place in that factory-supported Yamaha World Superbike team. Of course, Axel Bassani would want the full factory Ducati ride, currently occupied by Rubens Rinaldi. Bassani's put in some great rides, you know, often being the, the second best Ducati in, in the results behind uh, Alvaro Bautista. You know, more often than not, getting the better of Rubens Rinaldi. So in many ways, deserves that factory ride. But it's, it just never seems to be spoken of. There's always other names coming into play in terms of that second um, Ducati factory seat rather than Axel Bassani. So could he jump ship and go factory Yamaha looking for a factory contact uh, contract? The top Rack has proved what a great ride that Yamaha um, uh, factory seat is winning the world title a couple of years ago. So that's potentially um, one rider that could be Dominica Goethe. Could he make the step up from the um, satellite team that he's in at the moment up into the full factory team, the GRT team, into the full factory Yamaha team? I think he's he's justified it in many ways so far. Still a long way of the season to go. There's no doubt about that. But Dominic's looked really good. He's, he's put in some great performances both in qualifying and, and, and in um, sprint races and in the feature races. So, yeah, I think he deserves it. He's, he's really been the man on form the last couple of years. Dominic Agurta, uh, you know, hats off to him. Dominated World Super Sport 600s, uh, Moto E World Champion. No one's ever, you know, done two world titles in a year like that, certainly in modern day racing. So, yeah, he'll, he, he would be a good name to go for that seat. Another big name being mentioned is Sam Lowe's. Now, Sam Lowe's has kind of found a little bit of form uh, in the last couple of Moto2 races. Had a little bit of bad luck at Lamar, but again, showed good pace in the qualifying and stuff off and, 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 and taking that amazing one at Jerez as well. Could we see the second of the Lowe's brothers in, in the World Superbike paddock joining his brother Alex Lowe's who's in, in the Kawasaki team? Could be a good bet. Um, You've got, to, you've got to have a decent-sized crash bull. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the Lowe's boys can't argue the fact that they, they do like to throw bikes down the road. They do like to push to the limits. Um, so Sam Lowe's, question mark, but we've seen it. We've seen a lot of Moto2 riders make that transition from Moto2 to World Super Sport 600 and potentially into, into World Superbike. Andrea Locatelli, for one. Um, and, you know, there's a couple. Sam Lowe's, of course, a World Super Sport 600 um, champion, world champion there. So knows the paddock well, knows the Yamaha brand well. Could be a good fit there. Let's wait and see. There's, of course, also Stefano Manzi, who's uh, currently competing in the World Super Sport 600 Championship for the Tinkata team. A couple of good rides there. 
Could he potentially make the step up? I don't think straight up into the, the, the factory MR team. I think there's bigger names ahead of him, um, but he could make it. Remy Gardner is another name that's been thrown around. I don't think Remy has quite put his stamp on the World Superbike uh, paddock yet. One or two flashes of, of, of good performances there, but just hasn't certainly made the the kind of impact that I thought he was going to make. I, I thought he was going to get in that championship and, and really be a top five runner consistently in, you know, in qualifying sprint races and in the main races hasn't quite gelled just yet. I do think the performances will come, um, but I think, I don't think his name will be in the running for that, that second full factory Yamaha seat alongside Andrea Locatelli. And it's a big seat to fill. Yamaha losing top Raz, Raz Gadioglu losing their best opportunity at, at challenging for a world championship in my view Locatelli's done great things but he's just consistently not there not as consistently as top rack Raz Gadioglu that's for sure so yeah they're gonna have to try and fill that what is a big hole that's been left by top rack Raz Gadioglu moving over now to the MotoGP paddock and again more big rumors coming out of that starting in the Pramac uh, Ducati team talk that Johan Zarco could be making the move from MotoGP over to the World Superbike Paddock to partner Alvaro Bautista. What a team that would be. Alvaro Bautista, the, the Mr. World Superbikes at the moment, with Johan Zarco alongside him uh, on those Panigale V4Rs. That would be, geez, that would be probably the most formidable Ducati force that uh, Ducati have had since kind of Fogarty Corsa, you know, you know, Bayless, uh, Zaus, Haga, those kind of riders, um, that, that would really be a force to be reckoned with. But there's also talk that Zarka will stay on as a testing role alongside Michele Piro as a MotoGP rider while doing his World Superbike commitments as well. And and this is where Ducati get it right for me, is they throw their riders into different applications, World Superbikes, you know, more production-based, Pirelli tyres, take all that information, put it together with what they're doing in MotoGP and try and you know blend it all together to make the package that they have in MotoGP at the moment, which is the package to beat, although KTM are most certainly closing that gap. Um, so that'll be a real uh, interesting turn of events if Zarco does make the move over into World Superbikes. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Zarco, there's no doubt about it. He is a very fast rider, just hasn't been able to make it work in MotoGP the way he would have wanted to. Still hasn't picked up a win, picked up many podiums, including last time out at Le Mans in front of his home crowd. Uh, you know, he's got the pace, there's no doubt about that, but would you put your money on him week in, week out? Would you put your money on him as a championship contender? Potentially not. Uh, and the talk is that Marco Bezzecchi is going to be moved from the VR46 Mooney team up into that more factory-supported Pramac team with a more factory-supported contract alongside Jorge Martin, who another rumor is he's kind of just dismissed any rumors that he's going to be moving to the factory Yamaha team alongside Fabio Quattararo. No doubt the performances of Yamaha and Quattararo so far this season, Martin really looking at that going, do I want to give up a Ducati that gives me the opportunity week in, week out to go for pole position, sprint races, uh, sprint race wins and main race wins for, a you know, a very inconsistent Yamaha package that doesn't seem to be listening to their riders and getting anything right. You know, I, I, I can't see Martin moving. So I could see Martin staying at Pramac Ducati on his factory uh, Ducati um, contract on the factory Ducati machine, potentially al alongside Marco Bezzecchi. I think there will be another formidable force there. Taking his place, Bezzecchi's place in the VR46 Mooney team, Sounds like it could be Franco Morbidelli. Now, there's also talks that Franco Morbidelli could make the move to Yamaha World Superbikes and fill that void left by top rack Raz Gadioglu. I think it would be a, a great signing. Um, Morbidelli has proved in all the production, kind of, you know, when the MotoGP riders go riding, production-based superbike machines, testing, and that Franco Morbidelli has been really fast on, on his Yamaha R1 machine. So, you know, that could be a really good op option for him to potentially go for a world title in World Superbikes. He's, of course, already a Moto2 world champion to go back it up in World Superbikes. That could be something that will intrigue Franco Morbidelli. But there is the talk that he will move from the factory Yamaha team to the VR46 Mooney team uh, in place of Marco Bezzecchi. Now, of course, that will keep him within the VR46 Academy. Valentino Rossi is a big fan and a big supporter of Franco Morbidelli, and he's kind of nurturing him and now trying to get him back on his feet to the form that we know is there from Franco Morbidelli that took him to second place in the world in the MotoGP World Championship a couple of years ago. And I'm pretty sure Franco Morbidelli would be licking his lips at the opportunity to climb on what is a very competitive VR46 Mooney Ducati um, machine and environment for him. I think that kind of environment is where Franco Morbidelli would shine. I think 
the Yamaha, the factory Yamaha kind of environment and all that comes with that, I think just hammers down <clears throat> on a personality like Franco Morbidelli. So let's wait and see what happens with that. But it's very, very interesting to, to see the, the, all the happenings uh, within both the World Superbike and the MotoGP paddocks. So I hope you enjoyed this um, little catch up on all the news that's happening. Uh, we still got a couple of uh, weeks to wait before the next MotoGP race at Mugello. But yeah, top break, Raz Gadioglu, not going to World Superbikes, uh, not going to MotoGP, I should say. A little bit of a bummer. Would love to see top break in there. You know, same with Johnny Ray. I would have loved to see Johnny Ray make the move to, to MotoGP just to give it a try and, and see what happens. Potentially a two-year contract does look like though top break will be um, staying in, in World Superbikes for the foreseeable future. Or could BMW just spring a surprise on us and, and could they be signing top break to be the man to take them into MotoGP with a, a project. Scoop or poop. Bring your scoop or, or, or poop back. But uh, that's wishful thinking, I think. I think uh, Top Rack has pretty much cemented himself uh, in the World Superbike uh, paddock, which is <clears throat> a little, little bit of a pity. But either way, exciting to see what he can do on the BMW and excited to see if BMW can finally, finally, uh, really, really challenge for that World Superbike crown.